Hi there, welcome to our first um, Coastal Systems and Landscapes Cat Help session. Um, hopefully this will give you some pointers about the questions that you've got to be um, completing this week. Um, so, on to the first question. Um, explain the formation of a wave cut platform. Very straightforward, um, this question. Obviously worth remembering that it's four marks. Um, so really we want to be looking to kind of um, say four, um, four things, make four points. Um, about the formation of a wave cut platform. Um, I'm not going to talk you through that whole process now, but just make sure um, that you go back and um, have a good check of your notes about um, that landform in particular. It should be a relatively straightforward one for you. Um, second question, explain the difference between eustatic, isostatic and tectonic sea level change. Now, um, hopefully you should be happy um, with the meanings of these three phrases. Um, eustatic, isostatic and tectonic sea level change. Um, if not, again, go back and just have a look over your notes to make sure that um, you're clear about uh, the, those three processes and how they work. Um, the trap that you don't want to fall into with this question is just describing what those three processes are. So we're not just looking for a definition of those three processes. It's important to remember that the command word um, in this question is to explain the difference between them. So you want to pick out maybe how eustatic and isostatic sea level change are different from each other, or how isostatic um, and tectonic sea level change are different from each other. Now, um, those differences could be um, in terms of their causes, it could be differences um, in terms of their um, effects, it could be difference in terms of their uh, the scale in which they have an influence, um, so you can think about those differences on a number um, of, of different levels, but make sure you are focusing on the differences and not just the definitions of those three things. Then on to the final question. Um, so a six mark question, uh, this one, one of the, the sort of second um, style of six markers where it asks for your own knowledge. So you want to be able to, to kind of take some things from the figures um, and make sure that you expand on those things with your own understanding. Two figures that we've got in this um, in this question. Figure six, an aerial photograph um, of a stretch of the Dorset coastline. Um, so somewhere nice and close to home for us. And figure seven provides additional contextual information about the area, including its geology. And this is the bit that's really important. Um, using figure six and seven and your own knowledge, account for the development of this area of the Dorset coastal landscape. Now, this is a little bit um, of a confusing term sometimes, account for the development of. Um, account for, um, we can think about really as just being another way um, of asking you to explain, okay? Um, so really, this is asking you to use the maps to explain the development of this area. Um, another bit that people stumble on sometimes is the development of this area. We are not talking about human activity and human development in that kind of context. Um, we are thinking about the evolution um, and formation of the landscape. OK, so how um, has that landscape kind of evolved and changed over time? OK. Um, so we want to make sure that we're referring to figure six and figure seven. OK, first thing you might want to do um, is think about just trying to kind of familiarise yourself with parts of this um, map. So obviously we can see Lulworth Cove in the image there. We can see it down here in the map. We can see um, Fossil Forest Ledge here. We can see that down here in the map. We can see Mupe Rocks as well um, down here. Uh, we can see those in the image. Um, and obviously we've got Bacon Hole um, down there and we've got it here as well. The thing to do here is to think about um, maybe two or three locations within um, that stretch of the coastline. Think about the geology that we've got at that point. So use the key to help you interpret that. Okay, And then use your own knowledge and understanding of coastal landforms and coastal processes to basically explain why is the coastline um, like that. Um, so, for example, Lulworth Cove is a great example of a cove. Well, how has that been formed? Why has Lulworth Cove formed in that location there? 
based on what we know about the geology. Likewise, with uh, maybe this section around foss uh, fossil forest ledge um, or the area around stair hole here, what type of coastline is this? Um, and how has that resulted um, maybe in it being kind of a relatively straight, continuous um, coastline in comparison to maybe the type of coastline that we have here around Mute Bay. What do you notice is different about the rocks here, um, how they're arranged and why has that maybe then led to the formation of a bay rather um, than this very straight bit of coastline here. Obviously there are other features in there, so Durdle Door is a natural arch, um, obviously we can then go on to explain maybe how they're formed. Um, we've got evidence of stacks, haven't we, around mute rocks, um, things like the bull, um, man of war rock and so on. Um, so we have got some stacks in there as well. Make sure that you're focusing explicitly on the things you can see in um, these figures. So make sure you're making reference to the rock types and you're making reference to the names of places um, that we can see either in this map or in the photo up here. And also then make sure that you are using these figures as a little bit of a springboard to then develop your answer. So perhaps um, starting your answer by saying, oh, one thing that I can see in figure seven is, um, and then adding to that with your own knowledge by saying something along the lines of, um, this has been formed because, or um, the reason this has been created is, or um, the landscape has developed in this way because. So just to recap on that last question, we want to be using both of the figures, figure six and figure seven, and make sure we're using both of those and our own knowledge. And we want to be explaining how that landscape has formed and developed over time.